The last item we'll look at under current liability is payroll. Payroll is current liability in many ways. First, we owe the employees the wages they have earned, but in addition, we also have to collect and pay taxes on all the wages paid to employees. So there's a different um, current liabilities embedded in this. Not only do we have the wages payable, so we have the pay period, we calculate the wage, we put it down in, in our books as a wage payable until payday comes. But also on top of that, we have to collect the taxes for the employee and pay to the government on behalf of the employee. So, um, for example, an employee would pay federal income tax. We as the employer, is we're not responsible for paying that, but we are responsible for collecting it from our employee and mailing it to the government. Okay, So it's not an expense to us, it's just simply a payable to us. It's an expense to our employee to have to pay the federal income tax. We're just required by law to collect it on behalf of the federal government. So we collect their federal income taxes, we collect their FICA taxes, FICA's, uh, we'll talk about a little bit more, and we uh, collect their state income taxes, if any exist. There are 50 different states, and different states have different law. Um, in South Carolina, where we're located, uh, there are uh, state income taxes involved, so you do have to pay income tax on at the state level. Everyone who has ever received a paycheck knows you must pay taxes. As an individual, we typically pay federal income tax, state income tax, and FICA taxes. Now let's talk more about FICA. FICA taxes consist of two different taxes, OSDI and HI taxes. OSDI stands for Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance, and HI stands for Hospital Insurance. You probably refer to those as Social Security and Medicare, or Medicaid. Okay, so OASDI is what we commonly refer to as Social Security. And then the HR, hospital insurance, is the Medicare, Medicaid insurance. Though your textbook may use different rates, to, depending on the textbook you're looking at, as they are subject to change each year. Remember, these are taxed by law. Well, they've been similar for many years, but um, currently for 2013, employees pay a rate of 6.2% for OSDI on all wages earned up to 113700 Again, this is for 2013. It, it can change if federal government decides to change it. And um, employees pay 1.45% for HI with no cap. So keep those in mind. Again, our textbook uses something slightly different. They use generic numbers just to show you the point. But if you were to look at your paycheck, if you go out and you work and you get a paycheck, you will notice that you pay 6.2% for OASDI, and you should notice that you pay 1.45% on HI. So take whatever your gross earnings and multiply that out, and you should see that. What you may not realize also is your employer must also pay taxes on the employee's earnings. So anytime that you pay, the employer has to pay tax as well. The employer must match the FICA taxes paid by the employee. Again, currently it's 6.2% and one45 and in addition, the employer must pay FUDA and SUDA taxes, which FUDA stands for the Federal Unemployment Tax Act, and SUDA stands for the State Unemployment Tax Act. So, anytime we employ, uh, anytime we have employees as a company, we must pay taxes. So, yes, you as an employee pays taxes. The company is responsible for collecting those taxes from you and sending them to the government. Then, on top of that, the employer must pay tax as well. Now. I will indicate this. The employer is responsible for collecting the taxes on your behalf. They are not liable if you misrepresent your taxes in any way, shape, or form. Um, an employer pulls your taxes based, or your federal income tax specifically, they pull that based on your W 4 form. So if you put single or married, etc., they tax you based on your rate. So if you went in and you put married and you have five kids, but you're really a single dude, um, odds are you're going to still owe taxes. That is not the employer's fault. That is your fault for declaring that on your W-4. So keep in mind, even though the employer is responsible for collecting your taxes on your behalf, they're only responsible for collecting taxes based on what you tell them to collect. So it is your responsibility to make sure your taxes are correct once it's said and done. Okay. So again, the employer just collects those on your behalf to send in. You're still legally responsible. So let's look at an example. And to begin, let's look at an employee's earnings. Let's see how we would calculate the earnings and then record any necessary entry for the employee side. So let's look at this example. JC works at Parker Company. JC's regular hourly wage rate is $13 per hour. 
and uh, she receives a wage of one and a half times her regular hourly rate for hours in excess of 40 per week. In other words, she receives overtime if she works over 40 hours. For the weekend in March 12th, JC worked 44 hours. Her gross earnings prior to this week were 7,200. That's only applicable because of those caps, and we'll talk about it here in a minute. JC is married and claims two withholding allowances. The FICA tax rate is 7.65%, and the state income tax rate is 2%. JC also has $25 in union dues withheld from her paycheck each week. Using the below tax table, and the, the tax table we'll look at here in a few moments at the very end of our form here, um, using the below tax table, collect the following, or calculate, excuse me, the following for JC. So first off is gross earnings. Now how would we calculate gross earnings? Well, let's go down here and look at that. Now notice there's two things we have to consider. Up to 40 hours, she makes one rate. Anything over that, she makes time and a half. So let's look at the 40 hours. For the first 40 hours, she's going to make, if memory serves me correctly up there, $13 per hour. So you're going to take 40 hours times the $13 rate, and you get $520. Now on top of that, she gets overtime pay. Um, she actually goes uh, four hours this week in overtime, and we have to multiply that by the overtime rate. Well, remember, her hourly rate is $13 per hour, and she gets 1.5 times that rate in overtime. So you're going to do four times. That comes out to $19.50 per hour, and that gives us $78 in overtime. So her gross earnings would simply be the $520 plus the $78, which would give us total earnings of $598. Okay, so for her gross earnings, we go up here and say, okay, she earned $598 in gross earnings. All right, the next thing we have to look at is the actual federal income tax. Well, how do we calculate federal income tax? Well, remember we said federal income tax is calculated using the employee's W-4. So as the employer, we look and we see on JC's W-4 that she is claiming married and that she says she has two withholding allowances, which means she has two dependents. So now it's time to look at our tax table. So if we scroll down here to our tax table, which I've included here, we can look at that. Now notice she's paid weekly, and this is for married persons. There are tax tables if you are married or single, if you are paid weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. So there's different tax tables depending on how often you're paid. But this case, we do pay weekly. This is a weekly payroll, and this individual is married. So we look for the wages. Remember we said gross wages were $598. So at least $590, but less than $600. Well, $598 would fall between that $10 range. Then we look over how many allowances did she say. There was two. So we go zero allowances, one allowance, two allowance. So based on her income of $598 for a week, and that she's married with two exemptions, her tax would be this $55 sitting here. Okay, so we go in and that would actually be the tax. And that's how you calculate simple federal income tax. Now, if earnings exceed what the chart has, there is a percentage method, but we will not learn that in principles of accounting. That's saved for a payroll um, class later. So we know federal income tax is $55. Now let's talk about state income tax. Well, it says that our state income tax is a 2% rate on all earnings, so we just take the 598 times 2%, and when we did that, we get 1196. So state, take, uh, state tax for this class, you just simply take the percent times the amount. And the, the reason that is, is again, there are 50 different states, so that means there's 50 different laws regarding income tax. So whatever your state uses, you'd have to find their rates. So we're just going to use a generic percentage of 2%. All right, then next comes FICA taxes. Well, it says FICA taxes are 7.65% on all earnings. And remember, there is a cap, but the cap is up in the hundreds, that hundred thousands. Well, this employee has only made 7,200. If they've only made 7,200, that means there is no cap at this current time. So we can just take the 7,000. 200 and we can multiply it by the total 0 0.0765 and when we do that you end up getting $45.75 okay 
So as long as you're not at the cap, you simply take it and multiply it out. Now the cap is only applicable to OSDI. Remember, there is no cap on, on HI, but our textbook combines those into one tax. So we're going to look at it as one tax as well. Okay. All right. So after we calculate our FICA taxes, the next thing we need to take into account is the union dues. Now remember, our customer or our employee has $25 of union dues withheld each period. That is, again, a straight pass-through. Anytime we withhold voluntary deductions are what they called are called. So you go in and say you have health insurance through your company, but you have to pay a portion of the premium. Well, that comes out of your paycheck. Well, remember, when you do that, that's not a, a revenue to our company. That's simply a point that you're paying your own insurance or a portion of your insurance. So the company will pay, uh, put that into a payable account, and then when they pay the monthly premium on the insurance for the company-wide, they will apply that percentage to the actual uh, bill that they receive from the insurance company. So there's various things. Another one is 401k. The employer doesn't benefit from the 401k that you contribute to, so they simply have to take the funds out of your paycheck, and then they will call that a payable, and then they'll pay it to the actual 401k company, whoever is sponsoring the 401k. So keep that in mind. Voluntary deductions are simply pass-throughs for the employer. We withhold them to be paid to their respective person. Okay? Now we just need to get the net pay. And to get net pay, you simply take the actual gross pay, 598, and you subtract out all the taxes. So 598 minus 55 minus 1196 minus 4575 minus the $25 in voluntary deductions gives us 469, or excuse me, 46029. So that's the amount we would actually have to write the check to our employee for. That's the amount you as the employee would take home. Okay, for. 6029. Now, how would we record this as an employer? Well, the recording becomes very easily. Um, it doesn't tell us which pay period this is for, I do not believe. So we'll just go in and say the date is just A because it, it's just a transaction here. We don't know the physical pay date. And then we have to record it. Well, from a company's standpoint, this is actually wages expense. This is an expense to us, and really the full amount is an expense to us. The 598 are total wages. That's the amount we actually owe our employee. Okay. Now, on our employee's behalf, we withhold taxes for them. So those are not expenses to us. Those are payables to us. So federal income tax would go in as a payable. It's a pass-through. We simply hold it out of that expense for you, and we send it to the government instead of paying you. Okay. And then the same thing for the state income tax. We are withholding it on your behalf in order to pay to the state government. And that went in at $11.96. And then the FICA taxes again go to the federal government. So I'm going to put FICA taxes payable there. And again, that is $45.75. And then last, the voluntary deductions. And in this case, we have union dues, and they literally are union dues payable for us. We as a company don't keep the union dues. We pay those out to the union that the person belongs to. And then that brings us to our net pay. Now, we're not actually paying yet. It's not payday. We're just calculating. So it goes into wages payable. And the amount that goes into wages payable is the net pay, the actual amount we owe the employee. Okay, so again, on the employee side, when we're recording payroll for our employee, it all goes into wages expense for the gross pay. And then all of the taxes we withheld becomes payables. They're short-term payables. We put them on our books until we remit them to the appropriate authority, either the federal government, the state government, or some other entity that we owe the dues to here. All right, now that we've looked at that, let's look at another example. And in this example, we're going to look at two pieces. We're actually going to look at the employee side, and we're going to go in and look at the employer side. So Moss Company had the following data for the weekly payroll ending January 15th. We've got three import, uh, employees. We've got Martin, Grant, and Daisy. And then the hours worked. Martin worked 48, Grant worked 40, and Daisy worked 43. 
gives us the hourly rate. Now, instead of having to calculate it, this actually gives us the federal income tax withheld. So we withhold $44 from Martin, $36 from Grant, and $54 from Daisy. And then all of them have health insurance payments that they make of $15. So that goes into the health insurance category. This is not the hospital. This is not part of FICA. Health insurance is a voluntary deduction if you have insurance through your employer. Employees earn 1.5 times their hourly rate for hours over 40 each week. FICA taxes are six and a half, uh, six, uh, excuse me, 7.65% on the first 113,700 of gross earnings. State income tax is 2% on gross earnings. Moss Company is subject to 5.4% state unemployment tax and 0.8% federal unemployment tax on the first 7,000 of gross earnings. Prepare the general entry um, to record the payroll and Moss's payroll tax expense. Well, this is January 15th, so none of our employees would hit any of the caps, so we can sort of ignore the caps. I just put them in there so that you'd see they do exist. And also, the state unemployment and federal unemployment, that is only paid by the employer. No employee pays federal in, uh, unemployment tax. There are a couple of states in the union that actually requires employees to pay part of state. But there again, we are in South Carolina, so in South Carolina, North Carolina, I know for a fact that um, employees do not pay unemployment tax. So that state unemployment tax, for our example, is for the employer only. The employer always has to pay federal and state unemployment. So the first thing we need to do is calculate their regular rate of pay. So we'll go in for Martin, and that's our first one. Now to calculate Martins, we simply need to first find the regular earnings. Now the regular earnings would be the 40-hour work week times the 14-hour rate. So when you multiply that out, you get 560. And then we need to figure out the overtime. Well, the overtime rate for Martin would be $14 per hour times the 1.5 per hour. So he gets paid $21 per hour in overtime. So you're going to take that $21 per hour times the 8 hours that Martin worked over, and you get 168 So again, it's $21 per hour times 8 hours of overtime. Okay. And that gives us total weekly earnings of $728. All right. Now let's go ahead and do Grant. Grant would be 40 hours. So Grant had no overtime. So we'd just simply take the 40 hours times his rate of $12 per hour. And that gives us $480. Again, exactly 40 hours. So there was no overtime. So that means his gross pay is $480. And then Daisy, let's look at her. She worked 43 hours this week. And she gets paid 18 hours per hour, $18 per hour, excuse me. So first thing we're going to do is regular earnings, which is a 40-hour work week. So 40 times 18 gives us 720. So that's her regular weekly earnings. And then on top of that, we need to go ahead and say, okay, she worked three hours overtime. So First thing, find the overtime rate. 18 per hour at a dollar uh, or 1.5 times gives us $27 per hour. So that's how much she gets paid per hour over overtime. And times that by three hours of overtime. So we end up with $81 in overtime pay. So if you take 720 plus 81, you get $801 in total weekly earnings. That's the first step. Now the next step is to calculate the taxes. Well, federal income tax is already calculated for us. We didn't have enough information to calculate that, so the problem had to give it to us. And we know that they voluntarily have $15 in insurance deducted each time. Now we need to calculate the FICA, the state, and the net pay. Well, FICA taxes were 7.65% on their regular earnings. So for Martin, you would take $728 times 7.65 and you would get $55.69. Again, that's just their gross earnings, 728 times the 7.65%. And I think it actually comes out to like 55.692. We always round to the whole penny. So follow rules of rounding. Four down, round down, five up, round up. That's just normal rules of rounding because you can't have fractions of cents, okay? All right. Now, the state tax, we simply take the state rate, and for state income tax is 2%. So we're going to take the $728 times the 2%, and when we do that, we get $14.56. Then that gives us our gross pay, or excuse me, our net pay. 
to get net pay, you take the regular total gross earnings, 728, subtract out your taxes and your voluntary deductions. And for Martin, you should come out to 598.75. All right, at this moment, pause the recording and see if you can finish Grant and Daisy. All right, let's check your work. So for Grant, when you multiply that out, you should get $36.72 for FICA. For state, you should get $9.60, bringing the net pay to $382.68. And then for Daisy, you should have gotten $61.28 for FICA. You should get $16.02 for state income tax and a gross, or excuse me, a net pay, I keep saying that wrong, a net pay of $654.70. All right, so now we know all of our employees' pay data. Let's go ahead and record that, and then we'll look at the employer side. So this is January 15th's pay. Remember, for the employee, we record their total earnings as wages expense. So the wages expense would be the total earnings here. So let's total up our weekly earnings. So if you take 728 plus 480 plus 801, you get $2,000. And or two thousand and nine dollars and no cents. Okay, so that's the amount that represents our actual wage expense for the period. All right, now let's record our tax as well. One, we had federal income tax, and again, remember that becomes a payable for us. We're withholding it from our employee, and then we just have to remit it to the government. And that one's totaled at one thirty-four. And then we need to show our health insurance. Now, remember, this is a, a payable as well. We're going to collect it from our employees in order to pay it to the health insurance provider. And that's totaled at $45. Next, we've got our FICA taxes. So we've got our FICA tax payable. We're going to go in and say, OK, what's the total? So again, you take 5569 plus 3672 plus 6128 and that brings us to a total of $153.69. That's the amount we would record for total employee FICA payable. All right and then next we have our state income tax. So state income tax payable then how much? Well we'd take the 1456 plus the 960 plus the 1602 and get $40.18. So that's the amount of state. And then last but not least, we need to record that we do have to pay our employees. The wages payable portion of this is simply the sum of our net pay. How much do we actually owe our employees? So the 598 plus the 382 plus the 654, sum this column, you get 1,636.13. That's the net pay of all employees, so that's the amount we actually record as being payable to the employee. All right, now that we've done the employee side, let's look at the employer. Now remember we said we have to calculate taxes, or three separate taxes for the employer. They also have to pay. They have to match your FICA dollar for dollar. They have to also pay FUDA and SUDA. So let's talk about the FICA taxes. They match those dollar for dollar, so they would be one fifty three sixty nine. The employee has had to pay that amount, right? We withheld that amount from the employee. So on top of that, our employer also has to pay that amount. Okay. So it comes out to a total of 12.4% for OSDI in total, and then 2.9% for um, hospital insurance or Medicare. Then the last thing is food and suda. Now there is a cap on food and suda, but we haven't reached it, so we're going to ignore that there's a cap at this point, and we'd have to calculate the food tax. Now the food tax is based on our totals as well. So notice. <clears throat> Our employees had $2,009 in total earnings. None of our employers, uh, our employees had the cap there, so we're going to take 2009 and we're going to multiply that by the rate. And our um, FUDA, federal unemployment, is 0.8%. So you're going to times that by 0 0.008. So again, $2,009 $2, times 0 0.008. So what does that give us when we do that? Times 0 0.008, you end up with $16.07, if I did that correctly. Let's double check. 0 0.008. Yes, $16.07. So that's the amount of FUDA we would have to pay. Now let's talk about SUDA. 
SUDA is the same way. We're going to take that $2,009, but we're going to multiply it by the SUDA rate, and SUDA is 5.4%, um, so 0 0.054, and when we do that, we get $108.49. Okay, so that shows us how we actually calculate. And again, if you want me to reiterate that, to get the FUDA, we took $2,009 in total earnings times the 0 .008, 0.008, and then for SUDA, we took the 2009 and we multiplied that by the point or excuse me, at 054, 5.4%. Now the state rate typically is higher because the state actually pays the benefits. Federal uh, government does not pay benefits. They simply administer the process. So the 0.8% for the federal is just for administrative fees. SUDA actually pays out the employee unemployment benefits, okay? Now that we have that, we need to record it. And again, this is January 15th, the same period. This is the employer side, so this is payroll tax expense for us. And the payroll tax expense would be the sum of the three. So we take the $153.69 plus the $16.07 plus the $108.49. And that gives us a total of $278.25 in total taxes. Then we record our three taxes, and these again are payables. So it would be FICA taxes payable for our portion, and that was one fifty three sixty nine. Then it would be our FUDA federal unemployment taxes payable, and we're going to record that at sixteen oh seven. And then last is going to be our SUDA tax payable, our state unemployment taxes payable, one oh eight forty nine. So now you see that not only do we have the employee's pay that we have to consider, but on top of that, we are also taxed to employ you as the employer. Huh. Interesting concept, but it's the way that it works.